Ian, the new head coach of Notts County, you've literally just walked through the door, had a little look around the stadium, had some photos, just talk us through your, your emotions at the minute. Yeah, obviously really happy, um, really happy to be here, it's all come around pretty quickly but you know, arriving at the stadium today and seeing the the stadium, meeting one or two staff, you know, it's it's just great to, to be in the club and, and to get started. When you took the Osterson job, which we'll talk a little bit more mm. about later, you spoke quite clearly about the philosophy of, of that club and, and why that convinced you that that was the next right job for you. Mm. How would you define, based on the conversations you've had with the board so far, mm. Notts County's philosophy and why is it the right one for you? I mean, yeah, I was I was recruited by Ostersund for my the way in which I played, and obviously before I was there, Graham Potter was there. Uh, Graham did a phenomenal job there, and then left for Swansea. So I was recruited by the club based on the fact that there'd be a con like continuity with the, the the style and the way in which they wanted to play. So they felt that I brought that, and that was really important for me that wherever I go, they bought into the way in which I believe football should be played. So you know, when I when I spoke with the owners and and the, the board here. They were very clear, and, and to be honest, they'd done their research. Um, they, they had seen more or less every game that I'd coached, and, and so they were aware of the way in which I, I believe the game should be played and the way in which I try to get my teams to play. And I think it fit the way that, that they really see the club going long term. So, you know, for me, it was really important that when I had those conversations that were on the same page in terms of, you know, how do we want the team to look and how do we believe. You know the team should want to play play the game. So, yeah, I thought the the dialogue that we had was really good, and I think we're on a on a common ground for that. How do you think the game should be played? Well, I mean, for me, I'm a coach that believes in positive football, in in attacking football, in and and I want players to be to be brave. I want play. I want brave players that want to get on the ball and and uh, express themselves even under pressure. So no matter where we go, uh, we believe that we can win the game, and we can believe that we can play. You know, positive, brave football, and and try to control the game with the ball. So, that's that's how I've always seen the game. I, I try to place myself in the stands and think, what would I like my team to to look like when when we play the game? Because I think that how the game looks is is also important. Of course, the results are, are massive in football, but also how it looks for me is is important, and and I want it to to look how I think the the fans would appreciate it. Your head coach. How would you define that role? I mean, that that's the role I've always had. You know, I've been in Scandinavia for almost eight years, and and abroad internationally, it's very typical that it's a head coach, and then you may have a sporting director or a board or um, yeah, teams for recruitment above you, and and that suits me because I enjoy being on the training pitch. I think my strength is is on the pitch and with the players, um, and and for me, certainly coming from abroad for for quite a long period of time. I think having a, a team of people to, to help and support in the recruitment process, for me, you know, I, that's something that definitely I'll, I'll be able to lean on the, the analytics and the, the people that are around within the club already to help with that. So that, that frees me up really to, to coach the team and work on improving the players and improving the, the team for every game. You've had a fascinating career so far. Mm. You two managerial slash head coach roles have been uh, with Viking and Ostersund, both you know obviously hugely challenging roles given you know very, relatively inexperienced I suppose when you went in at Viking, but yeah. also off the field problems at both clubs. You know, just give us a brief overview of your experiences over there. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the first job I was in was Sarpsborg, a, a smaller club as assistant. And then I moved to Viking and and was there for three years, and, and ultimately was the manager there. I took the manager's job at thirty three years old, so I think I was the youngest manager they'd ever had there. It's a big club in Scandinavia. But the club was going through a very, very difficult period. They'd they, they got a lot of economic problems and it was about almost uh, cleaning the decks and, and rebuilding the club from scratch, you know, playing a lot of young players, promoting the youth and, and trying to develop a team. And it was a challenging, really challenging situation. I learned so much from that that first role. Um, it was it was a whirlwind, really. And then going to Ostersund was different. The club had just come out of Europa League. You know, they'd had the amazing run and Graham had left to go to, to Swansea. And the challenge was to pick up a team that had had such continuity and success for seven years. And then they, you know, they sold a lot of players and, and had to almost like rebuild again. But, you know, we, again, it was a good, certainly a good first period for me and, and learned a lot, you know, learned a lot in each of the different roles that I've had out there um, and, and hopefully take them. And, and I think about eight years ago when I left to go to, to Scandinavia, I think I've come back and improved and a much better coach as a result. 
you decided it was it was best to leave Oft- Osterson last summer mm. in a very amicable fashion. I, I believe you've not been short of opportunities to return to Scandinavia since. I think you've even had clubs and international roles mm. um, becoming available to you. You know, have you been in high demand? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think so. Uh, certainly back in Scandinavia, you know, I mean, been there for eight years. I know that my, my reputation is really strong and. And uh, I had a lot of opportunities when I left Ostersund to, to come back straight away. But, you know, with the family, we, we'd kind of made an agreement, you know, with the kids and, and my wife that they really wanted to, to be back in England. And it was the right moment for us, I think, in the summer to, to come back and, and begin looking here. You know, I did talk internationally. I spoke with, with Iceland and, and was very close to that job there. But, you know, ultimately, my goal was to try and find the right club for me in England and I've been very patient um, and I haven't rushed anything, I've taken my time and I've made sure um, any possibilities that have come up, I've, I've done my own research as well and the one thing that stuck out when I when I spoke to the owners here was that their long-term vision and their belief on where the club should be and where it wants to go was something that really interested me. I think many of our supporters with best the best sort of hearing of of glean that you're maybe not too uh, based not too far away from from nottingham you're from <laughs> leicester aren't you and i believe you're now based in cambridge with your family is that right that's right yeah so yeah originally grew up in leicester uh went to to leeds i lived in leeds for 10 years when i worked in the youth teams with leeds united and bradford and then i went out to scandinavia and we've relocated back in, in cambridge that's where my wife's from so yeah we, we're there now so not too far away Right, so on to the stuff that the fans really want to hear. Yeah. Short-term goals. We've got what, about a third of the season left. Yeah. What do you think can be achieved this season? You know, I've, I've, watched, I've watched a lot of the games now um, in, in a very short period of time, and, and I've learned a lot. I think that the team has, has got some really good assets and, and has had some good performances. You know, we're sitting sixth because there's, there's been some really good performances. Hopefully I can come in and now just see... You know, it's game on like Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. So it's really, really tight schedule. We're not going to be on the training pitch doing lots and lots of sessions to change too much. But what I want to just see is if there's, you know, fresh eyes coming in to look at details to see if we can just uh, take one more step forwards. And, and of course, everybody wants to go up. That's that's a no-brainer. It's not even worth... That's obvious that everybody would like to achieve that. So course that would be the the goal to do short term um so to see the what improvements we can make in the short term to get the success that we want but you know i've also got an eye on on how this is going to look long term i want to be here for for a long period to build something up so short term i want to win as many games as we can and and straight away hit the ground running so i know supporters want that and and i'm sure that the squad want to have success this season right now so you know, we go in with that mindset of we need to, to attack the short term, but you know, I've also behind the scenes going to be working hard to, to bed down some things that I think can really help the club for, for a long period. As a National League head coach, you're in a fairly unique position in the sense that you're now going to have access to vast swathes of, of data on not mm. only new signings, but on performance stats and, and everything like that, courtesy of, of our owners and, and the, the mm. platform that they've built for themselves. How much does that appeal to you and how much did that sort of convince you that this was a good job for you? It was a big factor actually, I have to say. Um, I'm not like a, I'm not a, a, a data, uh, what would I say, a real data guy in terms of my own work, but I, I really like when the data is brought to me and, and I can put it into context for what uh, I'm looking for in the game. So there's so much of it and it's so advanced now and I think if you don't use it, it's a massive area that you're missing out on. So. To, to really embrace it, um, you know, it, it, everybody knows there's like the science, which is the data, and then the art, which is the coaching, and trying to bring the two together. And I'm all about the coaching, but I love the, the data to, to connect with it and underpin it. So I think it's, it's, it's important. It's important to use it and, and put it into the context that you want. And, and if it can help us get better, and certainly from a recruitment perspective, the more detail you go in, and that's not only the data, but also the detail behind the human being that you're signing and the characteristics and the style of play, does it fit? You need to put all these things together and the data is a big piece of that as well. So combining the two to get the right people through the door is going to be massive. I'd urge all our supporters to, to have a Google for some of the podcasts that you've done in, in recent years. Mm. In my research ahead of this interview, I've been listening to a few of them, very, very insightful. And I thought one of the interesting points you made on recruitment in one of those podcasts was how important it was to recruit the right sort of player with the right attitude and the right mentality but what 
I'm interested to know is how do you identify that when often you bring in players who you've never met before um, and who mm. you're not really 100% sure what their character is how do you work that out? I mean, you you go through a process of looking through, of course, their their, their back history and the, the references, and you need to talk to players before you you sign them, and you need to understand what their ambitions are and if they marry with yours. And you can never get it one hundred percent right, but I guess that you have to 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 try to look at which players are open, adaptable, and 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 really want to to develop themselves. I, I'm I want players that are are going to come in and be unbelievably hungry to get better every day and learn and develop. And I think. You know where we are, especially in the the National League. You, you undoubtedly sign players that are, are not finished articles because that's the nature of where we are. So everybody's got capacity to get better. So you know we want to create an environment where we can uh, improve, and, and then you want players with a mindset that they want to get better. You've always had an eye on English football, haven't you? Even though yeah. a lot of your work's been done in Scandinavia, you've taken English players out of the lower leagues of the English yeah. system into Scandinavia so how much is how much would you say of a knowledge you have of the lower league English game I can't I'm not going to I'm not going to lie and tell you that I know this league inside out which I don't um, you know but I, I didn't know the the Swedish league inside out when I went there but you know we started with six wins out of seven so you know you, you I know football and I know coaching and I know tactics and, and hopefully that um, that helps when you come in but yeah, I took players from from non-league, so I'd looked at some players uh, and brought them over to to Sweden. And actually, a couple when I went to to Norway, we took some players and on loan from Crystal Palace, Sunderland, into Viking. And it, um, I, I think, it's a different style of football over there. But certain players can fit in certain styles, and I think that's worth worth remembering. So you can find really good players in different leagues that suit you really well. So I think I've been quite open with the, the mindset of where good players can come from and how they can fit into your environment and I've looked at the lower leagues for, for recruitment so certainly I understand the football and, and um, yeah and, and bits of it but yeah I, I can't say that I know it inside out at the moment but hopefully very soon I will and you certainly will because you've got plenty of games coming yeah, up to exactly, get used yeah. to and the first yeah. one is an intriguing semi-final tie against AFC Hornchurch in the yeah. FA Trophy now a lot of our fans, I guess, are looking at this game with huge importance, not only because it's your first game, but yeah. there's also a good opportunity that they'll be able to attend in limited numbers a potential Wembley final. How is that as a, as a first game for you? Yeah, it's a really, really interesting one because, you know, I guess that many of the Hornchurch players have been unable to kind of train and in lockdown. But on the flip side, I guess that they've been sat at home with just one thing on their mind and that's coming to Meadow Lane with a chance of of a Wembley final so actually I think it's an unbelievably difficult game because I think we'll find a team with like a, a crazy amount of passion to get out on the pitch and, and play and try and get themselves to a final you know this is the one game that they've been thinking about for months um, but it's, it's equally important for us you know I want to of course uh, hit the ground running and it would be nice to to get out at Meadow Lane and and, uh, and put on a good performance, hopefully, and, and of course the the carrot of being at Wembley and having supporters there potentially is is really massive because I think everybody misses the fans. You know, I, I started the season over in Sweden with no fans, and so I've experienced that, and it, it's tough. You know, you you thrive off of the supporters, and and when they're not here, you miss them. So you know, the the thought of being able to get to Wembley and have the supporters there would be it's fantastic really so yeah it, for me it's really important every game's important as I mentioned earlier you've literally just walked through the door so yeah. it's about quarter past nine Thursday yeah. morning at the minute can you just give a, a brief overview of how you expect the next two days in the build up to Hornchurch to go for you yeah I mean you know obviously we've played a game just a couple of days ago at Yeovil and um, and so the boys are into recovery and, and a lot of there'll be some training going on so I've just spoken with the staff and they're, they're very well planned with what they need to do today um, so you know I'm not going to drop into that routine and take over today I'm going to let the boys do the recovery that they need and the, the little bits of training meet some of the players today and have a, have a chat with some of them and, and then meet with the staff this afternoon and, and really just plan out how, how the training is going to go tomorrow and what we need to do um, and, and certainly get as much detail from, from all the staff as possible about you know players availability and, and uh, injury status and everything so that we can make the best possible plan not only for Saturday but you know then we've got 
important games the following week. So you know we need, really need to to look at this game and and the ones upcoming. Um, and uh, you know t today for me is really about getting into that. And then tomorrow, you know, it's going to be great to be able to get out on the training pitch. And even though it won't be a, a heavy session, just to get the players out there and do a little bit of work with them will be uh, will be brilliant. Big job ahead of you, but you yeah. will have the assistance of a new assistant manager in Mo Ross. Can you just tell us about why he's the man you want to be your number two? Yeah, so Mo was out in Norway. He played out there actually at Viking, uh, but before I was I was the coach, and then he stayed out there and he and he began coaching. You know, he, he retired from playing. Mo played, you know, played in title winning teams in Rangers and Champions League and international football. So comes from a really good playing pedigree. At the same time, he, he then retired at around 31 and started early to cut his teeth into to coaching and he did it a couple of leagues below where I was working in Norway. But we, we got on well. He used to come and, and we watch a lot of the trainings and we used to share a lot of ideas and, and we felt like you know, it would be a very, very good combination to work together. And, and over the past uh, couple, of, couple of years, you know, we've engaged a lot in, in how we work and how we see the game. And, you know, while I've been in Oster Sons, I've shared my experiences with him, and he's done the same when he's been at, working at Motherwell most recently. Um, so we felt like he's just left Motherwell, and it was the perfect opportunity to to bring him down. And I think his experience, both as a player and as a as a coach in different countries in different environments, is going to be really important to the to the team. I think he's going to bring a lot to the club. Ian. Lots of work to do, lots of exciting yeah. work to do. We better let you get cracking. It's been a pleasure to welcome you yeah. and we're really looking forward to seeing what you can do here at the lane. Thank you.